In this video, you're going to learn how to add and subtract rational expressions by getting a common denominator. We're going to go through two examples. I'll show you how this works step by step. So the first thing you want to do is you want to factor the denominator as much as you can. So let's go ahead and do that first. So this is a difference of two squares. The way we factor that is using a sum and difference pattern. So this is going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. So let's just cross that out for now. Over here, this is a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. We just have to say what two numbers multiply to negative 2, but they have to add to that middle coefficient, negative 1. And that's going to be x minus 2 and x plus 1. If you need to, review my videos on factoring. Now the next thing you want to do is when you look at these denominators, you want to make sure you get a common denominator. So what I oftentimes do with these is I look at what's missing. What do I need so that they have the same denominator? So if I'm looking over here, I notice that I've got an x plus 2 and x minus 2, but I don't have an x plus 1. See, like this denominator has. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by what's missing. Because whatever you do to the denominator, you want to do to the numerator, anything divided by itself, that's like 1, right? And so it doesn't change the value of this fraction. Over here now, you can see that it's got an x minus 2 and x plus 1, but it's missing an x plus 2. So what I'm going to do is go over here and multiply the numerator and denominator by what's missing, which is x plus 2. Again, anything divided by itself is 1. 1 times that original fraction doesn't change the value of the fraction. It just changes the way that it looks. Now when you look at this denominator here and this denominator here, you can see that they're exactly the same. So now we can combine these together into one fraction with the common denominator of x minus 2, x plus 1, and x plus 2. So let's go ahead and make one big fraction. I'm going to distribute the 2 here. This is going to be 2x plus 2. Over here now, I'm going to distribute the 3. That's going to give us 3x plus 6. But you see this subtraction sign here? This is where students sometimes go off track a little bit. You're subtracting this whole quantity, so you're going to want to put it in parentheses. An alternative that you might like is that you could think of this as, instead of minus, you could think of it as like adding the opposite. So I could think of this as like plus a negative 3, and then I could just distribute the negative 3. That would be negative 3x minus 6, which is the same thing we're going to get here when we distribute the negative. We're going to get negative 3x minus 6. Okay, so now all we have to do is combine like terms. 2x plus a negative 3x is negative 1x. 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4. And then it's going to be all uh, over this common denominator, x minus 2, x plus 1, x plus 2. Now, just a little note here. Sometimes when you go ahead and combine these into one fraction, you can factor the numerator further. In this case, I could factor out a negative 1. That would give me, uh, let's see, negative 1 times x plus 4. And the reason you want to do that is because sometimes factors in the numerator will cancel with factors in the denominator, and then you could reduce it down further. In this case, that doesn't happen. So this I would consider our final answer. Let's go on to example number 2. Okay, now example number 2. This one's a little bit different because we've got... Uh, a monomial here, we've got like a binomial times a monomial here. What you can do, another alternative, is you can break down these quantities as much as you can. And what I mean by that is like C10, 10 is really like 2 to the first times 5 to the first times x squared. Over here, C5 is already a prime number, so this is just 5 to the first times x to the first times x plus 1. Now, when you think about factors, factors are the quantities that are multiplied together. C Sometimes people will mistakenly think of like x and 1 as like a factor, like these, but they're really not. See, this whole thing is considered a group. It's a binomial. This whole binomial is multiplied by, by this monomial, okay? So you don't want to think about adding and subtracting. You want to see what's multiplied together. Those are the groups. Those are the factors, okay? So what we want to do is we want to look at, when you're finding the common denominator, you want to find the least common multiple, the one that occurs not the least, even though it's called the least common multiple, you want to find the one that occurs the most. So here you've got 1, 2, no 2's, so you're going to take the one that occurs the most, which we need 1, 2. Okay, here we have a 5, 1, 5. It's a tie. When it's a tie, you just take, you know, in this case, it's both 1, 5, so we just need 1, 5. Here we have x squared. That's like 2 x's. This is like 1 x. We want to take the one that occurs the most. We need 2 x's. That's going to be x squared. And here we have x plus 1. We don't have an x plus 1, so here we need x plus 1. So now you can see 2 times 5 is 10. So let's just change that to 10. Uh, x squared times x plus 1. So this is our common denominator here. So we want to make sure that both these fractions have that common denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply by what's missing. 
This one's missing an x plus 1. See, now it matches this denominator. Whatever you do to the denominator, you want to do to the numerator. Here, this one, you see it's got a 5, but it doesn't have a 2, right? And it has an x, but this one has two x's. So we're really missing another x and another 2. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2x. That'll give us the 10x squared times x plus 1, the common denominator. And so now all we have to do is combine this into one fraction with that common denominator and add those numerators. So let's go ahead and distribute the 3x. That's going to give us 3x squared plus 3x. Over here, 4 times 2x is 8x, and we're adding, so that's plus 8x. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. So this is going to give us 11x plus 3x squared. All over our common denominator, uh, 10x squared, 10x squared times x plus 1. Okay, now, remember when I was telling you about the numerator, you want to see if you can factor it? Let's go ahead and do that. We can see we have an x in common here for both of these. So we can factor out an x. That's going to give us 3x plus 11 all over our common denominator, 10x squared times x plus 1. You can see here that one of these x's cancels with one of these x's, leaving one left over. And so our final result here is going to be 3x plus 11 all over 10 x times x plus 1. And normally I just leave that denominator factor. That's normally how, you know, how it's done. You don't have to go ahead and keep multiplying. The main thing was to get the common denominator, combine them together. The next step after learning how to add and subtract rational expressions is to solve rational equations, again, involving getting common denominators or clearing the denominator. And I talk about that in that video right there. So follow me over to that video and we'll continue on with this lesson.